The Electoral College was put together in in many ways based on uh, the way that the Iroquois did things, which was each uh, each community would appoint a a wise elder, and and they would all they were called sachems, and they would all get together at a time you know every year and and you know, have a meeting, although the Sachems didn't actually have the ability to make a decision. They only carried the message back to the community, where in five of the six Iroquois nations, only the women voted. But there was also this idea of, uh, the in the Whig histories, uh, the W-H-I-G histories, the, the, the uh, Paul de Rapin de Torras was the most famous, who was the one that Thomas Jefferson was most in love with. I, after reading Jefferson's biography, autobiography, Reading his writings, I went out and bought a copy of uh, Tarras's uh, De Repin de, de Tarras's uh, History of England, published in 1760 uh, something. I, I published the, I bought the same copy, not the physically same copy, but the same one that Jefferson had read, and used some of it in my book. What would Jefferson do? A lot of it ended up on the on the cutting floor when the editor got done with it, because I was so in love with it, and the editor thought it was, you know, 17th century English or 18th century English. But um, the idea was that before the invasion of the of the Roman Empire, the England was tribal prior to the year 200, 300. And in fact, uh, Jefferson, in one of his in his letter when he donated his library, he said, you know, the, the most important books are are Tacitus, the Roman historian who was there when Agricola, his his uncle, conquered the British Isles in the year 200-something or 300-something. And uh, de Terras, uh, Paul de Rapin de Terras, the Whig historian. And what they used to do, what the British did when they lived tribally before they were occupied by the Romans, is they had these uh, counts. Each community would appoint a wise elder, and the wise elder would come to the, the Vicar Gemeinschaft and and would uh, determine who was going to be the leader of the country, and so the, uh, the you know at, at that time it seemed like a really cool idea to have an electoral college where each community would elect a wise elder, and that wise elder could vote his mind. I mean, if you're an electoral, if you're an elector in the electoral college, you don't have to vote the way that your community sent you to vote. And in fact, it's happened a couple of times, only a couple of times in American history, where electors have voted in a different way. But it's kind of outlived its usefulness. You know, we don't, you don't have to drive, you know, ride by horseback three hours to get to Washington, D.C. anymore. And, uh, and we do have instantaneous communication. And so now there's this movement for a national popular vote to say, you know, the Electoral College is an anachronism, and let's just elect whoever gets the most votes, and let's let campaigns be national. And Mitch McConnell seems to be quite worried about this. S Scott Kais is with us. He is uh, a, uh, a writer, blogger over at Think Progress, uh, the Think Progress blog. Scott, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me on, Tom. Tell us about, uh, I, I actually I have a little audio clip of uh, Senator McConnell, the, who is the Republican leader in the Senate. Um, and his paranoia about elections in general. Let me just play this, and then I'd like to let you riff off of this. Here, here he is. Now is the moment. No more games. No more gimmicks. The Constitution must be amended to keep the government in check. We've tried persuasion. We've tried negotiations. We've tried elections. Bingo. Nothing has worked. Yeah, we've tried elections and nothing's worked. What's wrong with this guy, Scott? Well, this is that was a comment that he made in July, you know, yeah. saying that we need to rewrite the Constitution and add in a balanced budget amendment because you know, and this is the Republican Senate leader's words because, in his words, elections have not worked. Right. I mean, this is a man who's supposed to be leading, you know, at the forefront of our democracy and saying that elections haven't worked. What really doesn't work is that voters know they don't want a balanced budget amendment. That it would be so draconian and, well we wouldn't have been able to fight world war ii if we had one oh they, for example most, of, most uh, you know the, the the paul ryan budget itself would be essentially unconstitutional under the balanced budget amendment that republicans are trying to peddle right. uh and and so you know people like senator mcconnell are forced into positions where they in order to try to tout the balanced budget amendment they end up having to say things like elections haven't worked mm -hmm. it, it's, it's pretty it's pretty out there yeah. So, so Scott Kais, what 
you know, he, he today, Mitch McConnell gave a speech to, at the Heritage Foundation, and apparently this topic came up. And you know what happened? Give us the report. Right. So, so uh, there was a a a, a, um, a presser at the Heritage Foundation concerning the National Popular Vote, and what the National Popular Vote Compact is is a group of states have gotten together and and said, you know, we uh, state lawmakers have said that the the Electoral College is kind of outdated. Now it's going to it'd be really difficult to actually go through the constitutional uh, amendment process to uh, to you know, enact a, a popular vote and dismantle the Electoral College. But one thing that states are allowed to do is say, you know, we're going to bind together and we will award our electors to the candidate who wins the popular vote. Right. Now, the genius of this plan is it only kicks in once a majority of states with electoral votes uh, have signed on to it. So until there are states with 270 electoral votes, it won't take effect. But after that, if we were to get enough states to sign on and there are 270 electoral votes in the plan, then the winner of the national popular vote becomes president, and we don't have a repeat of the 2000 election when Al Gore won the popular vote, but George W. Bush By a half million president. votes. Oh yeah. yeah, no, it wasn't. It wasn't even very close. You know, I mean, it, it, he won it by hundreds of thousands of votes, and yet because of just an idiosyncrasy in the electoral college, George W. Bush ended up becoming well. President. In part, also had the Supreme Court not stopped the count in Florida, uh, Al Gore would have won, according to the recount that the New York Times did. But that's a, that's a whole other issue. Um, exactly. So now, it also something that our listeners probably need to know about, and our viewers need to know about, is that. There has been an attempt to game the system, and that is that in some of the uh, some of the Republican states, what they have s tried to say, uh, states that that have more Republican members of Congress, because you get one electoral vote for every member of Congress, um, so you get two for your two senators, and then you get one for each one of your uh, uh, state representatives, mm. and that in those states where a majority of those electors or those con members of Congress are Republicans. They have tried, or there have been attempts, to say that this state is going to stop being all or nothing, and it kind of this is almost the reverse of the national popular vote, and each individual congressional district's vote will be counted. So, it, excuse me, I have it backwards. In the states that are majority Democratic, the Republicans are trying to get this done so that the state won't be entirely Democratic. There will be Republican votes in there. How is that effort going along? Right. So uh, this has been uh, proposed in a couple of states, in, in Pennsylvania and Wisconsin in particular, right. where they're you know, more um, blue-leaning states. They've uh, voted Democratic in the past few presidential elections, right. but right now Republicans control the governor's mansion and the state legislatures in both of those. Right. And what they're trying to do is essentially game the system. So they know that in 2012... Uh, you know, Barack Obama is going to have the inside edge to carry Wisconsin and Pennsylvania. So what they're going to try to do is dilute the number of electoral votes that he can win by carrying the state. Right. So we have state. just 30 seconds. Is, are, is, are they going to succeed at this? I don't think so. I think I think that cooler heads are prevailing here, uh, and that we will we will be able to shut down those efforts uh, in, in both states. But okay, you know, and the national was, popular vote. How how far down the road do you think that is? Is this yeah, a, I think that's years? still going to be a, a couple years off. But with people like Mitch McConnell calling it a genuine threat to our country, you yeah, know, the Republicans are going to rally against it. So who knows? There you go, Scott Kyes, reporter over at ThinkProgress.org. Scott, thanks a lot for the good report for the great reporting and for coming on our sh our show and sharing it. Hey, thanks. Thanks so much for having me. Good talking with you. We'll be right back.